When this man bought his new house, he had no idea that he was about to embark on a crazy adventure. And it all started when he saw this bizarre contraption stuck to the ceiling of his attic. It seemed like a wasp's nest, but nobody could have predicted what he found inside. The house was rustic, but beautiful. It lay all the way out in the countryside, an idyllic place surrounded by forests and rivers. Calvin fell in love with the property the moment he stepped foot on it, but he had no idea that his purchase would soon scare him half to death. Calvin opened the front door of the building to inspect his new house further. The sunlight met the wooden floor just right, and it gave Calvin a homely feeling. It clearly did need a lot of work, though. The house's bones were solid, but everything else had not seen love in a long time. As Calvin navigated the empty rooms, he looked around and imagined his furniture in it. The old, musky wallpaper would be removed and painted over, and with some touch-ups it would be lovely. But when he reached the top floor, he noticed something. There was a hatch in the ceiling that he had not seen before. Maybe it was because he now had the time to slowly walk through his house. Or maybe it was because of the big floor-to-ceiling cabinet that was blocking the hatch. But before he bought the house, Calvin never noticed it. What in God's name might be up there, he wondered. The hatch fascinated him, but also made him nervous at the same time. The location of the cabinet was strange. Why would you place such a large object right under a hatch? It was like the former owners didn't want anyone to go up there. Or did they not want me to see it? The thought of a mystery room in his house was exciting, and Calvin didn't hesitate for a moment to find out what was hidden inside. He put his body against the cabinet and pushed it to the side. It was heavy, but eventually he managed. And when the cabinet was cleared, the hatch fell open instantly. When he looked up, he saw nothing but a black hole and some dust particles falling down. He had to get up there. Calvin rushed to one of the adjoining rooms. He already put a painting ladder there for later use, but now it would get him up to this mystery. He climbed every step with purpose. Once at the top, Calvin lifted himself up in the large space. It was a dark and scary attic, too dark to look around at first. But it was not the darkness that would scare Calvin. It was the spine-chilling sound that came from that darkness. An extremely loud thump echoed from the shadows. The loud bang made the hairs in Calvin's neck stand up straight. What was that? He said as he fumbled in his pocket to get out his phone. The sound disappeared right before he could open his phone's flashlight. Calvin looked around in nervous anticipation. What he spotted then was incredible. It was large, enormous even, and it was stuck firmly to the ceiling of his attic. Calvin looked at the strange object in amazement. To most people, it would almost seem alien, but Calvin had an idea of what it might be. Little did he know that the object would hold a scary surprise. The object looked like a giant wasp's nest, the biggest one he had ever seen. It was daunting at first. A house with this many wasps must surely be due for an exterminator, but Calvin did not hear any buzzing sound coming from the thing. They must be sleeping, he thought. He took a step closer. Calvin was about ten feet removed from the nest. His nerves were still high, so he knew he wanted to move slowly. He took another step. The floorboards creaked beneath his feet, but that was not the only sound he heard, because seconds later, a loud squeal and a deafening thump echoed across the attic. This is not a wasp's nest, Calvin whispered in fear. Whatever was up there didn't want to be disturbed. Calvin rushed out of the attic as fast as he could. He stumbled down the ladder, almost falling on his way down. He pressed the top of the ladder against the hatch, closing it back up again. In record speed, Calvin made it to the front door of his house. It took him a while to calm down, but when he finally did, he sat down on the porch. This is not normal. Can I still sell this house? Calvin was lost for a moment. I need to call the former owners, he then thought. The phone rang, and the former owners answered. This is Calvin, he answered. The old couple sounded enthusiastic when they heard his name, like they were still unaware about what they had left him. But when Calvin started talking about the hatch, their tone changed. Oh, you found it, have you? They said. The two old people told Calvin that they knew about the wasp's nest. It grew large in a very short amount of time, just before they wanted to move out. 
We apologize for the inconvenience, but we did not have enough time to remove the whole thing, and we thought that mentioning it would hurt the sale. After hearing their explanation, Calvin got pretty angry. He did not care about the fact that they left some empty remnants of a nest. But you could have exterminated or removed whatever animal lived in there, he shouted over the phone. It went quiet for a second. But then Calvin received an answer he did not expect. The old couple tried to calm the angry Calvin down. What are you talking about? We got rid of all the wasps in the nest. There was an exterminator and everything. The nest is just an empty husk, the old couple said. But Calvin wasn't talking about wasps. What about the thumping sound and the squealing? He asked. The former owners acted confused by his question. They never heard any noise that even resembled what Calvin described. The only thing they knew was that a large swarm of wasps dominated that attic space. But to their knowledge, they were all gone. That's when fear re-entered his body again. What he heard was way bigger. The old folks hang up their phone and left Calvin with even more questions than before. He hoped that they could have helped him solve what was up there, but now his fear only grew more intense. He felt afraid to enter his own home, but Calvin knew that he had no other choice. There was only one way to get this done. He would have to enter his home again and face what was hiding in the attic. This was his house, and he was not going to be bullied out of it. As the hyped-up Calvin walked up the main stairs, he heard the noise again. It intensified with every step upwards. Once on the second floor, Calvin grabbed the painting ladder. It was still lying on the ground after his first attempt, but this time he would stand his ground. He placed the ladder firmly on the ground and climbed his way up to the hatch. Calvin felt his hands shaking, but he ignored his flight response. Everything in his body screamed at him to go back, but ignoring his impulses, he opened the hatch once more. What am I doing? What have I gotten myself into? He asked himself. But still, he climbed through the hole, shining his flashlight into the dark place that scared him just moments before. His presence was definitely noticed by whatever lay dormant in the attic space, because a soft growl was heard from the darkest corner of the room. Out of instinct, Calvin's feet started to move backwards a little, nearly making him slip and step into the hole he came up in. But he recovered right in time. He smacked himself in the face twice, trying to regain focus. Come on, man, get your act together, he spoke to himself. After regaining his balance and a bit of confidence, he was ready to face the nest. Slowly but surely, he stepped closer. He felt ready, and it also helped that the scary sound went quiet all of a sudden. His feet moved across the creaking attic floor as he inched closer. He knew he wanted to do this slowly, so he could mind his surroundings meticulously. He didn't want to get jumped or surprised by anything but nobody could prepare Calvin for what he was about to encounter. As he moved closer, he noticed multiple ripped open food wrappers spread out across the floor. He started speculating about what could be up there. What kind of thing could make this much noise and could be collecting nougat candy bars? Was it a raccoon? They are born scavengers and not at all a threat. No, that was impossible. The thumping sound was made by something way larger than a small raccoon. Maybe a person secretly lived up here. His thoughts ran wild, and for some strange reason it distracted him from his fear. But it wouldn't take long for that same old fear to come rushing back. Calvin was now standing beside the large wasp's nest. There was no buzzing sound, just like the former owners said. On the side of the nest was a small hole. Calvin was tempted to peek inside. The room was dead silent, but when he did, he immediately regretted his decision. What he saw inside gave him the fright of his life. His heart rate shot up instantly, and he felt fear sweats pour down his forehead. What he saw in that supposedly empty husk made him step back and fall on the floor in disbelieve. One thing was for sure. This husk was far from empty, and Calvin found himself in a situation where he was unsure of what to do. When he peeked inside, he found a large eye staring back at him. As he lay on the ground, he still saw the eye moving. What the hell is that? Calvin scrambled onto his feet, trying to regain composure once more. There was a broomstick leaning against the diagonal wall of the attic beside him. Calvin grabbed it and tried to arm himself against whatever was inside that husk. 
Come out, come out now, he shouted as loud as he could. With the tip of the broomstick, Calvin carefully poked the large nest in front of him. All the while, the voice inside his head kept saying that he should drop the stick and run. But Calvin was persistent. The poking made whatever was inside move, because the nest started to crackle and shake. Finally, when the crackling and shaking stopped, Calvin heard a familiar sound. A few squeals echoed from the large husk. It was the same sound that he heard before, but this time it did not seem so menacing. The same could unfortunately not be said about the sound that followed. A heavy and low growl sounded from the darkest corner of the attic behind the husk. Calvin's gaze instantly shifted towards it as he tried to eliminate the dark space. His flashlight wasn't strong enough, though, to fully make the dark corner visible, so Calvin shouted for whatever was hiding to come out into the light. Calvin took a big step forward, trying to make his light reach the far corner of the room. And that's when he saw it. Between the attic floor and the outer wall of the house was an open space, and out of it climbed a large black bear. The creature barely fitted in the open gap. It made its way onto the wooden floor of the room. Calvin called it out of its hiding space, but he instantly regretted that decision. The animal stomped on the ground hard with its heavy paws, making the familiar thumping sound. It puffed and growled trying to scare Calvin out of its den. Calvin took a step back towards the hatch so he could make a run for it if the bear attacked. He followed the creature with his eyes and saw, however, that the bear was not making a move towards him. It slowly stepped towards the nest, lifting its body of the ground. The bear was now on two legs, and Calvin could now see the full size of the animal. The bear wasn't focused on Calvin. Instead, he grabbed the husk with its paws and put his head through an opening in the back. Calvin could hear a rustling sound coming from the nest again. What is this bear doing? He wondered. But that question would soon be answered. Because when the bear pulled his head out of the nest again, it was holding three tiny bear cubs. They could not be much larger than rabbits, and they were squealing intensely. It was an incredible sight. This bear must be their mother, Calvin thought to himself. And that nest seemed to be used as a warm sleeping bag for her young. The thought of it was heartwarming, but the cute scene in front of him did not calm Calvin's mind. The bear pulled her young towards her as Calvin flinched back with every growl. Calvin knew that he could not stay up there. It was too dangerous. But those bears could not remain there either. He dropped his body down the ladder once more and ran downstairs. What the hell am I supposed to do? Calvin's head was racing. This was not something he couldn't solve on his own. Once back at the front porch of his house, Calvin decided to make a wise decision. He knew he needed help and called 911 in response. He explained to the police that his newly bought house was invaded by bears and asked if they could come over as soon as possible. The police told him that they would send over a quick response unit. He was glad to hear it, and now he could only wait until the outside help arrived. His mind was racing while he waited. How could a bear have made it all the way up into my attic space? Calvin was glad to see that he did not have to wait long for reinforcements to arrive. Within five minutes, he saw two police cars approaching his property. It was the first time today that he could let out a sight of relief. The cars pulled up and four men stepped out of the cars. Three of the men wore the same uniform. They were obviously police officers, but they had another man with them. He was clothed in a beige colored uniform and he held a large rifle in his right hand. The man introduced himself as the animal expert, and he told Calvin that they brought a tranquilizing gun with him. The police decided to enter the house first. The man in beige handed them the tranquilizing gun and sat down next to Calvin. This could be a dangerous situation, and we would like to assess the situation first before you can enter again, the officers told Calvin and the expert. The expert nodded and shifted his focus on Calvin after the officers left. He said to Calvin that he would try and explain the situation inside. He started talking. These parts are known for bear activity. That is the thing when you buy a house way out in the forest. And it is not uncommon for bears to seek warm and dry places to hibernate or birth young ones when the winters get particularly cold, the expert explained. The house had been on sale all through winter, 
so that explained the situation inside. He continued by saying that bears are excellent climbers, way better than most people might think. After the short explanation, Calvin and the expert heard multiple sounds coming from within the house. First, they heard a loud thumb and a growl, the same sound that terrified Calvin before. But shortly after, it was followed by a muted gunshot coming from the attic space. Did they do it? Calvin wondered. After a couple minutes of tension-filled waiting, Calvin saw movement on the main stairs. An officer's walked downwards and was holding the three bear cups from the nest. That's when Calvin finally could let out a muted smile. And the mother bear? Calvin asked. The officer smiled back at the worried homeowner. The officer told Calvin that they successfully tranquilized the mother and that she was now sleeping on the floor of the attic space. The expert took over by saying that these bears would be taken to a sanctuary close by. It was a safe place where they could rest, recover, and thrive. Calvin smiled widely. He could finally rest now, knowing that his house was safe and the bears had a proper new home. As he saw the bears being driven away, he couldn't help but feel a sense of awe. He felt a newfound respect for these wild animals, and there was only one thing left to do now. He stepped into his house and could finally start the renovation of his new home. It was a scary start to his new adventure, but one he could look back on with a smile. Who can say that they started their home journey with a bear family living in their house? Calvin couldn't help but laugh. If this story touched you as much as it did us, you should watch this video. Three weeks after giving birth to twins, mom felt sick. When doctor sees ultrasound, he says, I'm sorry. Click here to get the full story.